So there seems to be a group of people in China who have probably found access to the fountain of youth. But the secret to longevity here in the longevity village is not a magic potion. Instead, in Bama village, people depend on their diet. They incorporate vegetables into their diets with every single meal. Along with vegetables, they also incorporate legumes such as peas, beans, and lentils. Now, when one of the village members was asked whether they exercise, in response, he actually laughed. No, they do not exercise. Instead, movement is very crucial in their day-to-day -day lives. They are farmers there, so they're constantly in the land, on their feet, moving non-stop. So now that we know the secrets to the longevity village in Bama in China, we may incorporate some of these secrets into our daily lives. We do not have to live there to experience longevity along with them. Dear viewers, during our holy month of Ramadan, I wish you all a happy Ramadan and let us all not forget the people who need our help. Fasting is, the, is one of the main pillars of Islam. However, our religion has exempted few people from fasting. These categories include the elderly, pregnant women, breastfeeding moms, travelers, children, and people with certain medical conditions that their health restrict them from fasting. One of those conditions is diabetes mellitus. Nevertheless, our adolescent patients insist to fast during the holy month of Ramadan, and they want to take the challenge. So we have to help them out on how to fast during the month of Ramadan smoothly without any complication. Let me tell you what happened to your body during fasting. During prolonged fasting, our blood sugar drops and then the body starts to uh, exert fuels, which is the sugar in, in our case, from the bloodstream, from the muscles and livers. In case the fuel, the fuel get, ran out, then another source of fuel is used, which is the fat. And to stabilize the blood sugar, you need multiple chemicals or multiple hormones other than insulin to stabilize your blood sugar in the target range. In our diabetic patients, those hormones might be affected. That's why they're at higher risk of complication during fasting. Each patient is different, so you have to speak to, the, to your medical diabetes team to discuss if fasting is an option for you. There are certain risk factors if you have diabetes and you are an adolescent that should restrict you from fasting. Those factors include, number one, if your hemoglobin A1C is more than 8%. What I mean by hemoglobin A1C is that the blood test that we usually do every three months in clinic, it's taken by a finger prick or a blood venous sampling, and it measures your average blood sugar in the prior three months. The target range for adolescent is 7%. So if your A1C is above 8%, we don't recommend you to fast. The second condition is what we call hypoglycemia unawareness, which I mean by that is if you're having frequent low blood sugar and you're not experienced with the symptoms or you're not having any symptoms of low blood sugar that includes, include sweating, tiredness, hunger, then you should not fast. The third condition, if you have frequent or persistent high blood sugar, then you're not allowed to fast, as this might cause you to go into uh, ketosis, which is ketones in your blood and, your, and urine. Fasting might worsen low blood sugar, high blood sugar, might put you at risk of diabetes ketoacidosis, and might put you at risk of dehydration, which every patient should uh, be aware of. 
after the break, we're going to talk about your survival guide and your plan during Ramadan if your diabetes team advise you to fast. Thank you for staying tuned. If your medical diabetes team advise you and agreed on a plan to fast during Ramadan, then you should set a goal prior to Ramadan and you should meet with your diabetes team to have an educational session about Ramadan. The educational session should include five topics. Number one, how often should you check your blood sugar? Number two, how to prevent the complication of fasting. Number three, how to do with physical activity and Ramadan. Number four, how to modify and adjust your insulin dose. And number five, how to, how to have a proper meal plan. One of the questions that we usually get is that how often should we check our blood sugar during Ramadan? The preferred a frequency of checking your blood sugar should be at least seven times during Ramadan. Uh, the first time is starting from pre-suhoor, two hours after suhoor, uh, first thing in the morning, noon time, uh, around the Asr prayer, just before futur, and two hours after futur. You should always prepare to check your blood sugar if you experience any symptoms of low blood sugar, high blood sugar, or any symptoms of tiredness. If you experience any of the symptoms of low blood sugar during fasting, which include sweating, hunger, increased heartbeat, or tiredness, you should immediately break your fast at any blood sugar level or if your blood sugar level is less than 4 millimole on the meter that we use in the Middle East, which is the lower number, or if you're using a meter from the US, which has the higher number unit, then it should be below 72, where you should break your fast. And immediately drink simple sugar, such as 125 ml of fruit juice. If you don't have uh, juice, then have three teaspoons of sugar added with water. Make sure that you recheck your blood sugar 15 minutes after your treatment. And if your blood sugar is above the recommended um, uh, number, then you should have a snack if your iftar is later than one hour from the treatment. If you're experiencing high blood sugar, which I mean by high blood sugar, if your blood sugar is above 14 millimole on your meter, if you're using a meter in the Middle East, if you're using the higher numbers or the meters from the US, then the number is above 272, then you should definitely check your ketones in the urine or blood. All the patients are educated about how to check their urine ketones or blood ketones. And if the ketones is negative, then you should give an insulin correction dose and check your blood sugar frequently. However, if your ketones are positive, then you should break your fast immediately, give an insulin correction dose, and check your blood sugar frequently after that. At any time, if you have symptoms of abdominal pain, which is tummy pain, if you have tiredness, or if you feel unwell, please visit the nearest emergency department for further intervention. Since we care about our kids and the health of our kids, our session is long, and I would like to give more information on your survival guide. So let's stay tuned until tomorrow so I'll give you the continued episode on your survival guide during Ramadan, which I will talk about more about meal planning, advices for the parents and the kids. So the
The Bahmans in China often live to past 100 years of age. We've already established that in their diet they incorporate vegetables, legumes and movement is very constant in their day-to-day -day lives. But a very another important aspect is that they understand that humans are social beings. And given that they are social beings, they understand that and they often interact in larger families. So under one household, it's very common that four to five generations of the family live together under one roof. The elders are given respect. They are served first at the dining table and their opinions are always seeked. So socialize, that's a very key point to longevity. So as you embark on your healthier journey, whether it be to eat better or to exercise, tag along with a friend because socializing is a key.